Hey guys, and welcome back to RuneScape. Uh, so basically they released a brand new free to everybody quest here for the Gower quest. Uh, and this is going to be a long walkthrough. I think it's about 12 minutes. The quest itself took me about an hour to get through. Uh, I got lost a bit in the middle though, so take it as around your time. So you want to start here in Varrock, a little south of it, and come to the Gower farm. And just going to speak to the Gower brothers. Now, a lot of this is going to be sped up because I don't want you to sit through uh, an hour of raw footage. So, hopefully you prefer that it is sped up um, and that you can figure out what you need to do. So, once you've spoken to them, uh, accept the quest. And then what you want to do is you want to go to that room to the left of them there. And then investigate these boxes. And you'll essentially find some rune essence. But if you click on it, you can flip it around. And it turned out on the other side is a life rune. Once you've got that, you want to exit their little building and come over, investigate the scarecrow. And you can get a word I cannot pronounce, melting. And now you want to look at the water barrel here and you'll find a brussels sprout. Combine the brussels sprout with the word I can't pronounce and run over here to the rats. Look into their food trough and you'll find a broccoli root. Once you have the broccoli root, go back into the house and spin it on the spinning wheel and that will give you the broccoli string combine the broccoli string with the amulet there you go combine the rune with it and you got your cabbage speak amulet so once you got that on you can come out here and speak to crispy the cabbage he'll essentially tell you that the cabbages are rioting they're not happy and they want some party hats so you can just return back to the gowers and ask for some party hats you'll get pink ones you can't wear them uh, i did try no matter what option you pick and basically you will return these pink party hats to the cabbages, they will wear them, and they will be happy, but tell you that it's not all their decision, and you got to go and try and solve the uh, behind the sceneries issue. So once we've got that, return to Gower, they're going to give you a disc of returning, this is going to be useful, which you need in the Dwarven Mine. So we're going to get over to Falador, run north, here's the Dwarven Mine. So once you're in here, it's a different spot for every player, so I can't help with that, but just use the disc of returning. It will tell you where you need to go with the compass coordinates, so north, south, east, west. And you just got to follow those around until you find the close enough spot, and once you've found the close enough spot and you use it, your screen will go white. So this next part is a little confusing. Uh, basically, you can't see anything. It's in all black. So directly behind you, there's a table. And then once you've searched the table here, you'll get a pet rock. And then what you want to do is you want to use that pet rock on a wall. Now, I noticed later on that if I just hold the item here, it sparkles a little bit in the black exactly where you need to use it. So if you just wait, it will sparkle and you can find out what to use next. So next you want to search under the table. That requires you to right click on the table. You'll find some oranges. You'll take one of those. Eat the orange and you'll get a small key doesn't need to make sense use the key on the bumpy wall and the bumpy wall is you can see me searching around in the dark here on your right and once you've used that there you'll get a tinder box then you want to use the tinder box on the scary wispy thing uh, I believe that is just behind my character here once the sparkles start up there we go uh, and then you get a skull once you have the skull you use that on the unusual shape and that is your last interaction don't speak to it you need to use it uh, it's on the left of the screen here. There you go. Sparkles right there. Portal will open up. Bada bing, bada boom. And we can move through this portal and uh, start the next chunk of the quest. So you got to talk to this guy. And uh, he'll essentially tell you where you're headed. Uh, and think that you're a bit of content that was cut from the game. Uh, this is where a lot of fourth wall breaking happens. It's quite fun if you actually listen along and read the dialogue and do the quest yourself. Uh, but basically he will tell you that you're going into the behind the scenes pub and it's essentially where a lot of cut content and all that sort of stuff is. You want to speak to the spider back here, uh, Spiral Orb, the DJ, and they'll tell you the life altar's broken, you need to retrieve the three pieces. You can click on each of the dialogue options and find out where they are, but they're with Lucian, Steve and Thok. So we're going to start off with Lucian's piece once we're done with the spider. Uh, Lucian... Ah, so first of all, this building's a little confusing. It repeats infinitely both ways. So Lucian is top left here from the pub, but if you keep running, you'll wrap around. Basically, for him, you need to get into the 
bank here and steal back the piece because the wise old man stole it. But to do that, you're going to need five people to help you. So you're going to come in, you're going to talk to the person at the front desk, and then we're going to run around and we're going to talk to the guard who's guarding the safe, and then we're going to look at the door here. Uh, I'm sorry, you need four people. So once you've done that, run back to the pub, and you're going to need to find these four people. So your first one you're going to look for is Romeo. Romeo is just here, bottom left of the pub, and he's going to tell you that he can do the seducing, but he needs some advice. So luckily for you, the advice is just to the right of the pub, and it's all five of these people here at the table. You just got to talk to each of them, get the dialogue options, they'll give you their advice for Romeo. And then once you've talked to all five of them, uh, Zilyana, Tsitsaroth, Grardor, Criara and Nex, I probably butchered all of those. Talk to Romeo again, Romeo will have the advice and he will be happy to seduce her for you. Next you're going to need to talk to Guthix, who's just here on the right hand side of the pub. And he wants you to talk to the cabbages, which you can see directly across from the pub. Talk to them and they'll agree to give him a play uh, as an actor, a part as an actor. Go back to tell him and he'll be excited and over the moon and he'll help you out in robbing a bank. Next you want to talk to Tim and Crunchy. They basically tell you you need to drop off five cups of tea to their five environment artists. Talk to any of the bartenders and they'll give you the five cups and then just run around talking to each of the environment artists and they will each drink a cup of tea and be happy. They do all make nice little comments about environment artist stuff like normals and uh, map editor and everything. So once you've done all of that, and you've given all five of them, you can run back to Tim and Crunchy, and they will agree to join you on the heist. Next you want the locksmith, he's the penguin just north right here, and uh, talk to him, and he'll agree to do it without anything. And now, you got your penguin to agree, you're heading in to the bank again, and you're going to just do exactly the same actions you did last time, talk to the front clerk. Romeo will seduce her, they'll disappear. Once you've done that, talk to the guard. Once you've talked to the guard, Guthix will convince him to leave. Once you've done that, click on the door. Tim and Crunchy will remove that portion of the door so it's not away. Step through it and investigate the chest. The penguin will talk you through how to open the chest. It's nice and simple instructions. You'll pop it open and there's your first life alter part. Just seven minutes into this guide. So you want to exit out of the safe and back into the pub. So once you're there, we're going to be going for our second one. We've got to talk to Steve, the Chaos Elemental. Luckily for us, he's just south of the store by Claudia. And he will tell you that you need to go through the Grand Exchange portal. That's just south of him there. And it's got a whole bunch of pipes surrounding it. Uh, in this room, you have a pipe puzzle. It's a lot easier. I realized afterwards that there are three different sizes of pipe. Uh, there's a bigger medium and a small on each side and you need to make sure that all the small pipes connect to the small pipes All the big pipes big pipes medium medium and once you've done that It's just a matter of getting them all into place if it's not randomized You can just look at my end puzzle and that'll show you how everything is connected But the puzzle didn't take too long on its own once I figured out that there were different pipe sizes And it just meant spinning the double parts around a lot so once you get that the second piece of the life altar will just pop out and now you got the second piece so now you want to run over to Thok here, he's just north to, of the pub. Talk to him, you take a drink, and you'll go into the beta testing room. Once you're in here you're going to talk to Max, and Max is going to tell you that you need to get to level 99 in three unreleased skills. It's not hard, but it is a little time consuming. So what you want to do is you want to get into this top room here, and this is the riding skill. All you need to do, sit on a spot, and then uh, select the four actions. It's as simple as that. Uh, it's very similar to the Artisan's Workshop. Just select the action that is current at the moment. The instructor will change. Uh, obviously this is a joke. Uh, I don't think this is how you'd actually implement the writing skill. It takes a little while to get to 99 though. It's very quadratic of the formula. But once you do, you can just leave the room. Uh, it'll give you the congratulations and everything. Put a ba boom Exit that room. All the way down the hallway. We're going to go, don't look at those doors, there's nothing behind them. All the way down the left, here's your second room. This one here is the bank sitting. This could be the most annoying one of the lot. All you have to do is sit in the bank. Except that you're going to constantly get bored or it's going to be too much pressure and you're going to want to leave the bank room. But all you really need to do is just sit there. Every time your character wants to leave, 
force them back into the bank. Every time they escape, go back into the bank. Uh, investigate the things around you if you want cool little flavor text, as RuneScape developers always do. Everything has a nice examine text. Once you've got that, pop out. You're going to go to a door in the middle behind. Take off both weapons so you can get in. And this is sailing. You can look at the little bubbles. You can look at the sunken islands. Or you can just shoot the battleships. So you can make awesome you sunk my battleship jokes. Um, that's what I found was the quickest way to get experience. But it doesn't really matter. Have a fun play around here. Uh, it's, I think essentially what the spirit of this quest is. Just have a bit of a fun play around. So come back through. Talk to Max. He'll give you the third and final piece that you need. And then you can jump back out and just head off to the life altar. Which, luckily for us, the portal is just exactly south. So once you jump through, you'll see a bunch of things, life runes sitting around. And you can just click on the life altar, you'll fix it up. And then, oh no, the Black Knight Titan will show up. And uh, he's had a graphical rework, and he wants to fight you, as everything in this world wants to do. This is essentially what the rest of the quest is going to be. So you will defeat him but then you'll realize that he can respawn himself. So you'll defeat him a second time. Uh, I am combat level 72. I didn't require any health items throughout this entire thing. Here we're going to throw Crispy the Cabbage out so he can go and get the Gower Brothers to come and help us. So once you defeat him the third time, the Gower Brothers will be informed by Crispy that we really need his help in fighting this Black Knight Titan. And then all of a sudden, boom, they teleport in. And they're going to help us, but we still have to beat him, I think, three more times. Let's count him. There's another defeat. I think that is his third defeat, possibly. I don't know at this point. You just got to keep defeating him. That was his fourth, so this is fifth. Defeat him there. Now he use both weapons, and then defeat him for the final time, which is sixth. And then, boom, he'll lay down and not come back. Essentially, he'll just tell you that he just wanted to get to the overworld. He wanted to steal your uh, Ring of Returning. But the Gower Brothers will give him his own, and he can go back up, and everybody can be happy, and the Gower Brothers can stay down here, and you get quest complete. You can get some additional rewards just by talking to each of the brothers, depending on your levels for free-to-play um, skills. If you have high enough, you can get an XP lamp from each of them. And also, just here at the end, I'll show off the quest rewards for the overrides. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed the quest. Hope you enjoyed the guide. Uh, feel free to visit the rest of the channel. And as always, I'll see you in the next guide.